What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through step by step every single thing that you need to do in order to get covered by air cover. So that if ever a guest damages your property that you're renting out as a short-term rental on Airbnb, you can make sure that you actually get reimbursed for that and you're not left spending money out of pocket to fix damages or to replace any stolen or lost or missing items. Uh, I see this coming up all the time where people just don't know how to properly get reimbursed by air cover. So I wanna walk you through a few things you can do to make sure that you actually guarantee yourself a reimbursement. So let's jump right into it. Step one to getting your issue resolved and getting proper reimbursement is being aware that it happened right when it happened, not three weeks, a month, three months after the fact. Make sure you tell your cleaners as part of their turnover on every single guest day that they need to do a once over of the property inside and outside to just make sure that everything's in good working order, that there's no damages and have them do an inventory as well to make sure everything's there. Um, and then just give them a channel through which to communicate to you for anything outside of the norm. So that if there is damage, if there is anything missing, if anything happened at all that's out of the normal, make sure they know exactly how to get in touch with you so that you get that information right away. Step number two, make sure that whatever the damage you're missing or whatever it is that's happened, that it actually is covered. I see people making mistakes on this all the time where they're gonna reach out and try to get reimbursement from a guest on you know some bed sheets that got ripped in the washing machine or something that's just a really normal use regular wear and tear item that finally gave out on that one guest now obviously you're not going to be able to be reimbursed for damage that wasn't directly caused by guests i see a lot of people as well getting really scared away from trusting air cover because they go online into facebook groups or on youtube videos and they see people talking about never getting reimbursed by air cover and how air cover never pays out and what i've found is that the people that are saying that's the way air cover operates are just wrong those are the people that are going and trying to submit a claim for every little thing that wasn't actually caused by the guest those are the people that aren't documenting things properly those are the people that are trying to reach out three months down the road after something happened when they don't have any proof that the most recent guest actually caused the issue those people that are submitting claims wrong and not covering air covers very clearly laid out policies and procedures those are the ones that are loudest online and so that's the second most important thing is is just make sure that the damage being caused actually entitles you to reimbursement from air cover. And this really does apply to absolutely anything that is damaged specifically caused by that guest. Now, what it does not apply to is your regular maintenance or your regular wear and tear on the property. As a property owner, you need to be okay with the fact that there is gonna be regular maintenance that's going to need to be done on your property, just like any other property. Things are gonna break down. All these maintenance costs have to be factored in when you're initially buying the property so that you know that makes sense. And you obviously can't go and try to blame a guest for some regular wear and tear issues like that. Then from there, you wanna decide whether it's even worth your time and effort to reach out about this and try to get reimbursement. Again, if you're looking to get reimbursement for something that's $5 to replace, is it really worth your time and effort or your team's time and effort to try to get reimbursement for that? Probably not. For us, we have a, a rule internally that we just don't collect reimbursement for anything under $15. It's just not worth it. Some people might wanna do that out of principle, but I like efficiency. I'm just gonna eat the loss on $15. It's really not a big deal, especially because a lot of those things are, if they're really small, just accidental. Like maybe the guest dropped a single wine glass. Well, we didn't go and buy $60 wine glasses for a reason, right? We went and bought the less expensive ones. We can replace them easily. I don't want to penalize a guest for, you know, making a mistake. It's fine. It's the, it's a cost of doing business in my perspective. So you want to make sure again, though, that it's documented and that everything is detailed as much as possible. Guys, just want to take a quick break here to say that for those of you watching who want to build cash flow and long-term wealth by purchasing Airbnbs and short-term rental properties, there's a link in the description right down below for a free training that'll walk you through my exact strategy for investing successfully in Airbnbs. Now, if you're not ready to actually buy properties and you wanna get started managing other people's properties on Airbnb, the same way I got started, and build a full-time income managing other people's properties, there's actually another free training linked in the description down below as well that'll be a really great fit for you. 
So whether you want to invest in short-term rental properties and actually build amazing cash flow and long-term wealth by acquiring the assets, buying the properties themselves, or you're looking to earn a full-time income managing other people's properties on Airbnb, we've got some awesome trainings that are linked in the description down below that'll definitely help you out. When you sign up for the trainings, we're also going to send you a few other tools and resources completely for free just to help you get started. Again, the links to sign up are in the description down below and both trainings and all the tools are completely free. So make sure to register for the trainings links in the description down below. Then number four, make sure you submit the claim to Airbnb directly right away. You can go through the reimbursement process, submit all the information, get that claim started right away. Now AirCover has over the last number of, I think about six or 12 months ago, they changed their AirCover policies, they increased the amount of coverage, they made the whole policy much more lenient. So it's much, much easier to get approved on AirCover claims now than it was before. And you actually don't need to go and reach out for that claim as quickly as you did before. For, but there's still no reason not to. I recommend just reaching out to AirCover right away. So the quicker you get that ball rolling, the more success rate you're gonna have. And I found that when I reach out same day or the next day, or at least before the next guest checks in, I've had virtually a 100% success rate with getting reimbursed. Step number five is make sure you get proper documentation and or quotes or estimates or receipts for everything. So if you, if it's for example, a carpet that got soiled by, by an animal, a pet, something like that, let's say the carpet's ruined, you're gonna need to have proper documentation to show exactly what you paid for that carpet or what it's going to cost to replace it. The ideal scenario is you have the original receipt of purchase. So that's why I think it is really helpful to have good bookkeeping for your short-term rental. So you can keep track of what you spent on those things, but you can oftentimes just get away with sending in a, uh, a comparable item and the cost to replace that. And you can get reimbursement that way. So if that rug got wrecked, then you can send in the original receipt of purchase. That's perfect. If you can't, then sending them a, a screenshot or something from the website where you're going to go and purchase that from to replace it, that usually suffices as well. If you're having any kind of contractor or trades field come in, whether it's cleaners for additional cleaning, whether it's a repair that needs to be done, make sure they put together a quote for you that is specifically outlining exactly what work they did, exactly what the costs were, and make sure that there's nothing else included in that quote. So even though we'll always have our maintenance person go by and do other general maintenance, we're not going to be able to get reimbursement from air cover for the regular maintenance just for the damage that needs to be done uh, or it needs to be fixed. This is just make sure that's all really properly documented so that you can get that claim sorted. And then step number six is just follow up. Make sure that you're in communication with AirCover, with Airbnb, making sure everything goes smoothly. I see people a lot of the time just forgetting to actually follow up and they maybe uh, AirCover, Airbnb requests additional information and they just forget to reply back to them and it just slips out of their, out of their to-do list. Um, and so that's a really easy way to lose a claim is if you just you know, forget to follow up. So just make sure that you're staying in touch. And then the very last thing, step number seven, that's a, this is a bonus. Communicate with the guest because uh, what you want to avoid is any kind of negative review that they're going to leave you because you went and claimed this with air cover. So if you do get a negative review that is retaliatory because you reached out requesting reimbursement, just know as well as a bonus tip that you can actually reach out to Airbnb and get that review removed. Now you may have issues depending on the, on the support representative that you speak with uh, or that you email with or whatever, uh, you may have issues with actually getting them to comply with that and take down the review. But if you're persistent enough and you show them their policy, you send them the link to their policy on retaliatory reviews for Airbnb, which you can find by just going on Google and searching up Airbnb retaliatory reviews, you'll see the documentation around the website. And if you send that to them, and then you specifically show them that this was in fact a retaliatory review, that their guest was only giving you a negative review because you had requested reimbursement and called them out on the damages that they had caused, then you can actually get that negative review taken down. In the meantime, before you get that negative review taken down, or if you can't, always respond to negative reviews constructively. Don't be accusatory, don't be emotional. You just wanna be very factual, but nine times out of 10, you can actually get that review taken down because it obviously is gonna be violating Airbnb's retaliatory review policy. So I hope this video has been really helpful for you in learning how to best navigate air cover and make sure you get properly reimbursed for any damages. It's really a huge, huge perk of listing your property and welcoming guests through Airbnb is you get all of this insurance coverage 
covered in the cost of obviously Airbnb service fees and everything that they're gonna charge to guests. So it's a big benefit that you get from hosting on Airbnb and you wanna make sure that you actually can use it when it's necessary. Obviously, if you're hosting the right way, it should be maybe less than 1% of the time that you're gonna have a guest that you actually need to use that policy. But in that small, small percentage of times that you do need it, you wanna make sure it's there for you and that you actually get the reimbursement that you need and that you deserve. So if you follow these steps, you'll be able to achieve exactly that. If you have any questions, any comments, anything else you wanna share, just let me know in the comment section down below. If this video was helpful for you at all, in any way, if it was helpful, please, please do me a quick favor and just hit the like button on this video. It does help me out tremendously with growing this channel, getting these videos in front of more people, helping more hosts, investors, property managers, everything. So please take half a second to hit the like button. And last but not least, if you're new to the channel here or you're watching this video and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. I post two new videos every single week here on the channel.